Hey guys, Mike here. Today I'll be showing you how to macro an Anime Last Stand or any Roblox Tower Defense game. I'll be showing you guys what tools you need, like some tips and tricks, and the best settings to be macroing with. Without further ado, let's get started. Alright, just a quick disclaimer before I start today. Uh, this tutorial only covers on how to macro with a PC or a laptop. You won't be able to do this on mobile or console, but if you'd like a mobile tutorial, uh, please let me know in the comments and I'll, I will get to work on that. Uh, I have a few ways to do it on mobile as well, so please let me know. Thanks. Alright, so first off, what you're going to need to do is download the macro software. Uh, you'll technically only need one app to be doing this uh, macro, which would be Tiny Task. If you guys haven't heard of Tiny Task, it's a program that basically records and repeats actions and it just repeats your keyboard and mouse inputs. Uh, using the link in the description or just searching up tiny task, you can find the first link that shows up on Google and download using this version 1.77 button. At the time of the release of this video, this is the earliest version. Another program that I use but it isn't specifically required is screen marker and recorder. What it basically does, it lets you draw over your screen without pressing on it. Which makes it easy to like mark down locations or buttons you need to press during your macro. If you if you'd like to download, it's available on the Microsoft Store, and you can just press this button to download it. All right. After having everything installed, what you need to do is set up the apps properly so that your macros don't mess up. So first, we'll start with Tiny Task. What you want to do is go into this Preferences cog right here, and you'll see a few settings here like the playback speed it sets. Continuous playback, continuous playback loops, um, recording hockey, playback hockey, and then just a few other small like quality of life settings. Personally, uh, I change this based on the macro I'm doing, depending on how fast you want it, how small the macro is, and like how many steps it has. The more steps it has, the higher speed I set it to. So if it's like a raid macro, I'll put it between 8 and 20 times. But if it's something like a portal or like... A longer raid like survival mode and the dungeons mode then i'll put it to between 50 and 100x you also want to make sure that continuous playback is on without having continuous playback on the macro won't continuously play back so you won't be able to macro another thing to note is your recording hotkey and your playback hotkey these are the buttons you're going to use to record and then play back your macro another quality of life feature that i use is always on top so that even when my Roblox is full screen, tiny task is still there just in case I need to change anything. All right. So now for Roblox settings, you want to make sure that your game is at the lowest FPS setting possible. For me, it would be 60 FPS. Some clients outside of Roblox support more than 60 FPS and some support less as well. So if you can do 30 FPS, that is the best option for your hardware. Another thing you'd like to do is just drop the graphics all the way down. Just make sure that there's nothing like slowing down tiny task at all. And this would be the best way to do it. For ALS itself, if you go in a game, there will be a bunch of settings that you can change. So let's just head into a game right now and I'll show you which ones to change. All right. So once you're in a game, there's a few settings that you can change. So first you can see that like all my unit effects are on and everything. This will slow down your macro like tremendously. So what I like to do is just turn off everything that isn't a convenience feature. So automatically ready is something they added right before the blue lock update. And that removes the need to press the start button that comes up here. So I have this on, wave skip on, game speed on. Um, seamless retry is very inconsistent for most macros. So I don't, wouldn't recommend keeping it on unless you're trying to do like four or five runs. Fast cards I keep on, unit selection on the right is a personal preference. I only really use it when I'm doing a cavern macro. Aside from that, it's not really needed. Fast cards is good, disable dialogue, disable hazardous units. You might want to keep these so that by any chance the macro hits the sell button, it doesn't sell the unit. So graphics wise, you want to make sure everything that makes the game look better is off. So disable ability effects, damage indicator off, disable screen shake on. So if you want to copy these settings, this is the perfect way to go. So graphics, 
user interface and gameplay all right so with that out of the way let's get into what units you should be using for macros all right to be making good macros what you want to do is to make sure you have some sort of opening unit that can do really good damage uh most of the time people would be using either giorno uh, goku black um as a hill unit um green esper it would be tatsumaki and then fubuki as well with the recent update uh, let's see here gilgamesh is also a very good choice especially with the recent stuff they added for him uh jiren was a good pick back in the day too uh, a lot of units that have either hybrid or air is what you want to go for for a macro so the way i usually build a team for a macro would be to pick up a godly buff so either like Luffy, and if you're going with uh, if you're going with Jiren as your damage unit, then I'd pick Pride, or else I'd either go with Luffy or like Garo or possibly even Ichigo, depending on the content you're doing. As of right now, I think Luffy is the best godly buff for macros. So what I usually do, I fill up the first two spots with the godlies, and then my third slot, fourth slot, and fifth slot are allocated for any units I'll actually be using in the macro. So usually it's Geo or No or like Goku Black. Even now with the recent addition of Sai, he's a really good option as well. And then my last slot or last two slots, depending on how I'm doing it, would be for my farm unit. You want to make sure your farm unit has either like Entrepreneur, Glitched, or Efficiency as the, as the enchantment. Because you want to make sure that you can place your farm unit first and as fast as possible. All right, so with that out of the way, let's get into how to macro. For our macro, what stage I'm using today is Central City Act 6, which is a really good raid macro stage. So usually what you, what a macro would do is just place your farm here, place a, place a DPS here or here, depending on if it's a hill or a ground, and then just upgrade both of them, hit retry, and then just go again. So the point behind that is basically you want to make it as repetitive as possible where it presses all the actions that you need to use. So most macros that consist of first pressing the retry button, pressing any of the menu buttons that pop up, and then placing your farm, placing your DPSs, and then upgrading them, and then just stopping there. So the way I do it with screen ma marker and recorder, uh, I usually just draw down like where I'm placing my units just like this. And then once the stage is complete, I find where the retry button is and then I just press the retry button and then I call it a day there. So another thing I like to mark as well is the upgrade buttons. I use like dots, lines, and squares depending on what it is. Lines are like buttons I'm pressing, dots are like units I'm placing, and squares are the retry buttons and the menu buttons. Um, it's also a good thing to note that you should be remembering the hotkeys for things where like placing a unit would be one two three four five six like this one two three four five six and the the unit manager key being f and then the upgrade buttons like the locations of the upgrade buttons or if you choose to press on a unit t to upgrade and v to sell other than that it's really basic to learn how to macro you just need to know what buttons to press and at what time so once this stage ends, we'll go through how to actually record a macro. Great. So now that the raid is ended, what you want to do is make sure you mark where your retry button is, either by like just remembering the location of the button, which is what most people do, or just marking it like I did. So what I have here is I set up the macro where it is a hill unit, a ground unit, and then my farm, and then I just upgrade the three and reset. So as before, you want to just remember what your playback and recording hotkey is. And what we're basically going to do, we're going to press the record hotkey, place down my farm, place down my, my DPS, place down my other DPS, press F, upgrade, 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 F again, spam the retry button, and then end the macro. A good rule of thumb is also to remember that you need to press the retry button either before or after you start the macro, depending on how many units you're placing. So if you're placing more than, I'd say, four units, press the retry button before you start. If you're placing, like, three in this example, then just place them after you start. Other than that, 
it's pretty simple the macro as you see it's clearly working right now i'll just be running a quick um speed run of this just like a quick clip and you can see the rest of it finishing Alright, so that was just a clear run of the macro. Just to end the macro, just remember your playback hotkey. You just press it. For me, it's Control shift alt p And that's about it for how to do the macro itself. Alright, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. So that's basically how you make your macros. Just be thoughtful on how your placements are and how repeatable the situation is. Some macros I wouldn't recommend doing are like the Titan Boss Thrush macro. And uh, some of the portals, depending on how bad the portal is. Um, like recently the love portal, very macroable, very easy. Um, something like the soul society invaded portal for Riatsu is a little more difficult, but it, it could be done depending on how you do it. If you have any questions, feel free to either drop a comment below or join my discord server. Both will be in the description and please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more ALS content. I will be going over some of the blue lock units from this update and some other content as well. I'll be posting more tutorials in the future, and if you'd like a macro for mobile, please let me know, and I will be releasing a tutorial. Well, that's all from me, guys. Thank you.